We are, we're still, uh, we still are in Romans chapter 1, and uh, for those of you that haven't been here, we started studying the book of Romans. Uh, we, are, we got a little introduction from myself, then we got, we got down to uh, Paul's introduction to the letter, and uh, he made clear in verse 13 in chapter 1 in Romans, he made clear to the Romans, uh, to the Christians in Rome, that he, he, he had been meaning to go to them. He wanted to go see them, but he couldn't. He was hindered, he says. He's been hindered. And we know that the Holy Spirit hindered Paul from going places in the book of Acts uh, a couple of times. Uh, so maybe he was hindered by God himself. Uh, one, thing, one thing I do know is that because he was hindered uh, from, not going to, from going to Rome, we have the book of Romans. Because he had to get down to business and write what he wanted to tell them when he saw them. And we have this great book of Romans uh, that where Paul ex, ex, um, expounds the, the gospel so amazingly. And we'll see that as we go through all 16 uh, chapters that we have. And we, we finished last week in verses 17, 16 and 17. And uh, so we'll cover uh, verses 18 to 32. Now, when we, when we get down to business and, 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 and we ask ourselves, what is our greatest need? What is our greatest needs? Think about a man that, that you know, has an accident, a, a sea, a shipwreck, and uh, he, he just holds to whatever is left of the ship. He wants to survive. He gets to this island, uh, and there's nothing there. There's nobody there, nothing. You know, what, what becomes his, his greatest needs right away? Boy, he wants to have shelter. He wants to have food. He wants to survive. That's, that's the greatest needs that this uh, man has. He, he, he tried to do his best to survive. But here's the reality. Human, human beings are more than just a body, a flesh, that outer person. We're, just, we're more than that. And uh, our greatest needs is really not food or clothing or shelter. When we talk about that inner person, the Apostle Paul would say that a man's, our greatest need is Christ Jesus and his gospel, his good news. I know we, we always hear that, and I'll say this for the benefits of those that are here that might not know this, or maybe somebody watching later, but the gospel of good, good news. What, what are the good news that Christus, Jesus came to take our place? The, the wages of sin, Romans 6.23 says, is death. So when we sin, we all sin, we deserve to die. But we don't have to. But Christ took our place. He came to the world to do that. So we have those good news. So, so the reason he gave his life, uh, that, was, that is the reason he gave his life to a proclamation of the gospel, the Apostle Paul did, because he, he wanted to spread those, those good news of Jesus Christ, what he did for us. He wanted to spread that, and he dedicated his whole life to do that. Now, in Romans 16, 1, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, this is what Paul said, right before, this is what we closed last week. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it, in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. So this is a remarkable statement or announcement, if you will. Man can live. And I'm not talking about physically. We are alive right now in the physical sense, and we know we'll, we will die. As I always say, I always tell people in a jokingly manner, death is an appointment you're not going to miss. doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to miss that appointment. We were going to die physically, but we don't have to die spiritually. And that's what Paul is saying here. We can live eternally in the Spirit with God. So Paul says that the gospel is the gospel, the good news, is that power, is the power of God to make men right with him. To, to restore our relationship. Now, verses 16 and 17 of Romans 1, from the, this is where we get the, kind of form the theme of the book of Romans, which, which is justification by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. 
So it's all about God's righteousness, and that's what we're going to see as we continue to go through the week. So at the beginning of this, this uh, great, wonderful letter, Paul here declares, uh, he says in verse 16 that it's for the Jews and the non-Jews. So basically, it was a universal need that the apostle had, not just for the Jews, not just for the Greeks, it was for all people. So we all need it. We are in desperate need of a remedy, of a redemption from our God, our Creator, because of what we did. So one, one is not uh, likely to be, uh, we were not likely to be interested in, in good news if, if, we, if we don't understand what, what, what our needs are. You know, there's every single hour you, right now, there's somebody going in a, in a hospital room and getting a surgery, any kind of surgery, okay? But when you think about that, uh, you think that when you go into a hospital room to, to get a surgery, if you didn't know the need that you have to get that surgery? I don't think nobody would. Everybody that's going right now to a, a hospital room and getting the surgery, they understand the need. So, so it's the same thing in the spiritual realm, if you will. We have a great need. Man has a great need. But if we don't understand the need, then probably we will not apply the remedy. We won't. So believe me, we, we, need, uh, we need all kinds of surgeries when it comes to the inner person. We need heart surgery. Our hearts will be clean when we understand God, when we understand His will. And, and there's actually many, a few, few, few surgeries that, that we need when we are outside of Christ. And, and even when we are in Christ, sometimes we still need like to go to surgery again and to, get, to, get, to go into the hospital room and, and let God operate on us and, and work from the, from the inside out. You know, talk about hearts. Our hearts are covered. Paul is going to talk about that in chapter 3. How the circumcision is not in the flesh anymore. It's that of the heart. Our hearts are covered when we are outside of Christ. We don't see how we're supposed to see. Our eyes, we are blind. If we don't know what God wants for us, what He expects from us, we're blind. Our ears, you know, you keep going down our throat. We, we say so many things that hurt people. We need, we need surgery. We need legs. We, we're, we don't know where we're going. We're stumbling. We, we're going left and right. We're not staying in the center. We're talking about arms. We reach for things that we don't, we don't, we're not supposed to reach. Touch things that we're not supposed to touch. Our stomach. We're eating things that we're not supposed to eat. It's all spiritually. Don't think about the, the, the flesh. And, and there's, basically, there's a, we, we have a, a spiritual cancer, if you will, that's, that's eating us from the inside. And, we, and I'm saying all this to, to make us realize that we are in need of God's remedy, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul says that the gospel is that power. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. He also uh, shows the universal need for the gospel in the chapter 1. We'll see it in Romans chapter 1 all the way through chapter 3, verse 20. And he divides uh, all humanity into three groups. And uh, you, we, we can divide it into two, of course, Jews and Greeks, or Jews and non-Jews that compose the whole world. But we're going to approach this a little different. And Paul here divides humanity into three groups. And we'll see that from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 3. So every person, regardless of who uh, he or she is, will find himself in one or more of these uh, three categories. And the first of all, of course, Paul says that uh, some are rational sinners. And that's, our, that's what we're going to deal with today, this morning, uh, in verses, chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. Now, in Romans chapter 2 and chapter 3, Paul will explain that some are Reformed and religious sinners. He will talk to the Jews about that. So those are the three categories. But we'll see, you know, every responsible, accountable person in this room and in the whole world if you're of age and you understand what evil good and evil is and you're accountable we will fit in one one of these three categories no no questions about so paul's uh, purpose here is to to emphasize of of regardless who who we are regardless who we think we are we are guilty before god and we're subject and this is why i don't want anyone here and i know god doesn't want to but we are subject to the wrath of god to his judgment. We don't want to go through that. And we don't have to. As we will see when we finish. So we'll focus like I said this morning. In verses 18 and through 32. Where Paul. Where um, Brother Bradley read. 
And Paul here gives, uh, he gives the attention to the first category of sinners. It is the rational sinners. Now, uh, the rational sinners is... Uh, you know, we try to, to find reasons, or we try to rationalize God out of our mind. And, and that's why I said those who are outside of Christ, and sometimes those who are within, inside of Christ, in the body of Christ, we, we have to be really careful. We try to get kick God, God out of our thoughts. And then, you know, He doesn't, we don't want to think about God sometimes. When we're doing the wrong thing, we don't want to think about God. But when you're, when you're studying and you're reading constantly, that's what's the first thing that comes to your mind. But people on the outside, uh, the Greeks, the Gentiles, the non-Jews, they didn't want to do that. They want to keep God out of your mind. To think about God, you know, is, is, uh, would be to, to reprove all the evil deeds that people were doing and still doing. Now, at uh, chapter 1, verse 18, we have immediately after discussing the good news of the gospel, and uh, the gospel being the power of God unto salvation, Paul, Paul he, he, he turns to the wrath of God. He says in, verse, in chapter 1, verse 18, the book of Romans, he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. That's what Paul says. And, and one response here that men often makes is, is to reject the light of God, the light that God has given us. So we'll, we'll look in, in John chapter 3, if you want to turn there. John chapter 3, Jesus, Jesus there spoke about the light, the light that God has shed upon humanity and, and how men reject that light. And he'll, he'll say why as well. And you'll see that it kind of will support what I'm saying, basically. John chapter 3, verses 17 through, through 19, this is what Christ, Christ speaking, he says... For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world. See, you, you we have to pay close attention. God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through Him. He who believes in Him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light for why for their deeds were evil so that's that's what happens to us god has turned on the light switch in this world when he sent his son but people didn't like him why why they don't like the light because the deeds are exposed when we start reading the bible the new testament especially our deeds are exposed we realize what we're doing. We, we realize that we thought we were something, but we're not. So we need that light to, to guide us. So man has, has light at his disposal. You know, we have, so, and that's of course that you can actually find God. That's what God sent his light into the world. Now the problem is, as, as Jesus here points out in chapter three in the book of John, you know, men just love darkness. They love to stay in darkness. It's better for your eyes, right? When you, you dim the lights, can't see, you know, it doesn't bother you. You turn on those lights and you just go like this. The same thing the inner person does. When you're doing something that is not right before God, you turn on the, you open the Bible and you go like this. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it because our deeds are evil. So man rejects the light of God that has given us. And the, there's also a principle that Jesus laid down in John um, verse 7. This is a very simple principle. And we miss it because it's a sentence. So there is John 7, the first half of the verse. And uh, it's very important to everyone who, who, who seeks for the truth. Are you a truth seeker? So this, this statement is very, very easy and very simple. But we, unfortunately, we miss it. Here's what Jesus says in John 7, uh, first half of verse 17. He says, If any man, if any man wills to, to do his will... He will know the teachings. So, a very remarkable statement, very simple. If you decide to find the truth, Jesus is saying here, you will find it. You will find it. If a man makes up, if you make up your mind and, and you want to know God, Jesus says here, you will know his teachings. But you have to make up your mind because God is not going to make up your mind for you. We have to do, we are free will beings. And God wanted it that way. So we have to make up our mind. So somehow, some way, you know, when the sincere seeker 
uh, of the truth make his search, you know, God will bring that person into contact with the truth. Okay, so the problem is, unfortunately, the problem is that the truth convicts and convinces. It's the same thing where I was saying about the light. Uh, and it convicts and convinces that we are in need of God, that we are in need of the plan of salvation. Now, and, and it convinces us too that, that we are in rebellion against God. When, when, when that starts happening, our pride starts suffering. And we don't want to hear it. Now, the answer to rebelling, of course, is, uh, is to say no to ourselves. We don't want to do that as well. It's, it's all about me, right? But it's really not. That's the answer to rebelling, is to say no to ourselves so we can say uh, yes to God. Listen to Paul, right into Titus in chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That's what God wants from us. But we, we have to say no. No to who? To the self, to the lower self. We have to say no. So, and that cuts right across our, our, our grain of uh, men's pride, the pride of life. We were talking about that this morning. Uh, for in our pride, we, you know, he... We, we don't feel like we need anything. We got it. I got a job. I got this. I got that. So we, we got this. We don't need God. But it's not about the physical needs. It's not about what you can provide for yourself in the body. It's about spiritual. It's about the inner person. And that's what we have to be. So um, we may not want the truth because of that. Now, he, men or we may reject the light of God, of course, uh, that he has given us because we love that narcissist. Now, verse 18 says, that person, the person that denies the, the, the truth of God, he suppresses the truth in unrighteousness. That's verse 18 in Romans 1. So, so what, what, what we do is when we don't want to hear it, we hold the truth down. We suppress it. We don't want to hear it. So we just put it down and we don't want to hear it. So men reject God in three ways. We reject God from within or the light of God from within, the light of God from without, and the light of God from above. And that's what we quickly will see uh, this morning, in the, and then we'll close. So what kind of light has God uh, has revealed to man? You know, there's a light that we reject that's from within, from, our, from within ourselves. You know, he, he, the apostle here points out, and Romans 1 gives us the answer. So, so what kind of light has God revealed? The Apostle Paul says, he points out that men, we often reject the light from within. God has given light to every single person that he creates. Every single person has this inside. You can call it conscience. You can call it whatever you will. There's something inside of you that tells you when you do something wrong. It tells you that, that there is a creator out there. That it, there is a, a designer of this beautiful universe. So there's something with, within us. Notice verse 19 in Romans 1. Because that which, which may be known about God is evident to them. It doesn't say that. It says, verse 19, because that which may be known about God is evident within them. So that's within us. That we know in our hearts, in the inside, and that we are doing something wrong, that we need our Creator uh, to help us. It's always, is it not? Paul said again, he doesn't say evident to them, but rather within us. And we have to really pay, pay attention to that. Now, he has placed that in every human being. You, like I said, you can call it whatever you want. I, heard, I even heard a preacher call, calling it uh, the, the God hole. There's a hole in our hearts that has to be filled with God. If we don't do that, we're incomplete. Now, uh, some people say, you know, I'm not religious. You know, you've you probably heard that before. Um, that's because you decide not to practice religion. But, but whether we believe it or not, you know, we, we are religious and that we just, we just can't, we can't help it. And you'll see that, you know, that longing within our hearts it's within all men for God. You, we might respond by saying, you know, I, you know I, I didn't know I had this longing within me, but uh, it is there nonetheless. No, no doubt about it. So there's a hunger which, which we cannot, it cannot be satisfied. That, that, that need that we have cannot be satisfied with anything in this world, physical. 
I mean, of course, uh, but but through God. Now, we we try. I mean, we, we we can't. You know, we try to satisfy it through many different things. Uh, we can try. You know, we we're we know we're not happy. We're incomplete. But but we want to be happy. Of course, everyone everyone wants to be happy, right? Every single person wants to be happy. You know, so so we may feed on on pleasure. We may feed on I don't know outside pleasures. If you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll see what uh, the King Solomon did to to fulfill that hole, and he found out pretty quickly that nothing in this world will fill it. We could do it with pleasure. We could do it. We can try the education. We can uh, surround ourselves with uh, wealth. Work to work to uh, to death and, and surround ourselves with wealth. We can strive for power. We want to dominate whatever we are we can do all that stuff so what what is man doing when we do that well we we're trying we're seeking to satisfy that longing uh, within us and of course like i said none of this can satisfy in psalms uh, 42 verse 1 david said as the deers pants for the water brooks so my soul pants for thee O god that's what we're really seeking we're just looking in the wrong places we were looking in the wrong, we're looking with the physical eyes. And God is always there. He's all around us. He's there. He just, we just want to look in the wrong places. So, so we can suppress it. We can deny it. We can ignore it. You, you know, but it is there. And, and I, 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 I really want you guys to understand now. So, so the rational sinners, what, what they want to do is they want to put God out of his stuff. He doesn't want God to control our life. Or we, we have to say that. We, we, we become rational sinners as well, as well, even if we are in Christ. And, um, and the longing is there, but, but we are justly, if we continue to feed ourselves with physical things, we're justly under the condemnation or wrath of God, and we don't want that. Now, he's rejecting the light that God has given him, the light has, uh, that says God is and we are indebted. To him, so the rational sinners rejects the light from within, uh, and the light of conscience. Now he also rejects the light from without. So we have to be really careful. Paul Paul shows here that that the rational sinner, of, of course, is seeking to put God out of his mind, so he can feel good about what he's doing. Now he also rejects the light of creation, or the light from without. Listen, to what he says in verse twenty: For since the creation of the world. God's invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. There is no excuse that you look out there in this universe. You, you even look at, I always say this, you look at your body and how it works, how perfectly everything works and the cells and all that stuff that works in our body in this universe, the stars, the sun, the moon, the, the tide, everything, the water. I mean, there's so many... Uh, design in this world that it'll be unreasonable to say and to deny that there is a divine person there's something bigger than men that's how I like to put it so we all understand there's something bigger out there we call it God we call it divine nature he's out there he's not part of this creation because he created this world and that's what Paul says here God's invisible man cannot be seen I mean God cannot be seen by the human eye never has happened you can't see it. You see, God is a spirit. So, so he sent his son. So we actually seen him, but we, people ignore that. But, but in, the, in, the, in the real sense, man cannot see God in the, with the physical eyes. So, so uh, he is invisible, but Paul says he has been clearly, clearly revealed or seen in the things that are made. That's the light that we have from without. Of course, he's referring to the created world. You know, he, he made a world, and, and this world is a testimony. It's a testimony, a visible. You can actually see this world. You know that we are, you know that this world is. There's, you can't doubt, you can, you can deny that. There's no way to deny it. So, David said in Psalms 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. You know, there's somewhere in Hebrews, I, I forgot to get the verse, but somewhere in Hebrews, the writer says, for every house is built by someone, but God created all things. So God shows himself, you know, and, and we, in, in our ra rationalism, we can, you know, we can look at the world and say that this, this happened by, 
by accident. I don't know, what's the whole evolution thing? The Big Bang. We can say all we want. We can rationalize. We can we guess, name science and, and, and try to... There are some people trying to, to actually rationalize evolution and God to make Genesis a lie. They don't realize what they're doing, of course, because Genesis said that the world was created in seven 24-hour days. But this uh, Christian evolutionist, that you, if you call him that way, they're trying to rationalize now that, yes, I know God created the world, but he did it through evolution. Foolishness. Okay, foolishness. Because if you, if you make Genesis to be a lie, then everything in the Bible falls apart. So we have to be really, really careful. Now, um, when we reach these conclusions, of course, what are we doing with God's truth? We're suppressing the truth. We're, we're trying to put down the truth about God, and that's not a good thing. The world creates, I mean, the created world declares God's power, His divine nature. And uh, we, are, we are responsible to accept that evidence that's before. Remember, faith is, a lot of people confuse faith by you know, just taking a, a leap of faith. You know? Faith is not that. Faith is evidence. It's the evidence of the things which we hope for. There is evidence for us to have faith. And that's the first one. There's two great, two great revelations that we have from God. Through great, and both of them start with W. We got the works and His Word. So we have two great revelations from God. His works and His words. And we have it and they help us combine. They help us to, to, to come to a rational conclusion that He is in Hebrews 11, 6, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently uh, seek. And so, so we try to we reject the life from the inside, from, from the within. We reject our side from without. And uh, we, we try to forget that. But also, we reject the life from above. And when I said that, of course, you know, in our day, we have, we have um, additional evidence for God's existence. And that's, that, that comes to his words. Not only we have the works... And we can see there's something greater than man. But we also have His Word. So now we know what God really wants from us. There is a God. I can see that. I believe that. But what does He want from me? Well, that's revealed in His Word. That's revealed in His Word. God has spoken to man through His Son, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. His word is, is His word is revealed in the Bible, but when one when we reject the, the existence of God, we also rejecting uh, the light of God's word and the light from above. Now the Bible is here; we have it, and I love it, and I know you guys do as well. We have a Bible; we have God's mind. At least we have what He wants us to know. We know there is a verse that talks about there's still secrets that we don't know that they belong to God. But what He wants you and you and I to know. Is revealed. It's in the Bible. We got everything we need for God, for life and godliness. Uh, and that's in Second Peter chapter 1. So, uh, how, how are we to look on this, on the Bible? You know, are we to, to consider that, um, you know, it's only a product of, you know, a few feeble men, you know, just humans that wrote, and, you know, uh, by their own efforts, wrote this book down and, uh, and it has no equal value? Are we, are we to consider the Bible that way? Well, I don't think so. The evidence concerning the Bible, of course, is both internal, internal evidence from the Bible itself. We also have external evidence from outside of the Bible that says the Bible is the Word of God. All you have to do is a little studying, and you will see that the book, the Bible, what we call the sacred scriptures, can, cannot be, can, could not be have been written by men. No way. There's no way. When you really do a little study from within and from without, you'll know there is evidence that the Word, the Bible, is the Word of God, not of men. So, so we, we are called to accept that Word as a revelation from God. Now, when we turn away from, from the Bible, from the Word, we are rejecting light. That's the light that we have now. That's what Jesus came to this world. Now, the rational sinner, of course, he wants to put God out of his mind, so he rejects uh, the light that God has given. He overlooks uh, the moral consciousness that we have within, and of course, uh, he bypasses the, cre the creative, the creation uh, world that, that, God's, that God made, and all, all we do is just give a passing thought to the Bible as a revelation from God. So, so we have to be careful. As a result, 
of rejecting this light or, or God's light, um, God's wrath and judgment. And that's what I said in the beginning. We don't we don't want to be part, partic we don't want to participate in God's wrath. We don't want His judgment, and we don't have to. And that's what I said. We don't have to. We don't have to. We cannot become those these rational sinners that uh, that we become. So before we close, close. There's a couple of verses here, and this verse, couple of last verses from verse 21. We'll find six judgments, and then we will close. They're here around, announcing Romans chapter one, verse 21. The first, first one of all, uh, first of all, is Paul says here, verse 21. Their foolish heart was darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened verse 21 so if one loves darkness god will allow him or her to work in darkness don't forget that and never come to the light if you want to do that i said god is not going to force you to believe to, to look at the evidence and then to read about him and to believe in him and in whatever he did and all he has done for you he's not going to make you do that we have to make that decision so their foolish heart was darkened verse 21 verse 22 the second one the second judgment he says professing themselves to be wise they became fools now when one when we put god out of our mind out of our, out of our thoughts we become what fools there's only one one verse psalms chapter 14 and verse 1 the fool has said in his heart there is no god so if you say in your heart or anybody watching there is no god unfortunately the bible says you're a fool because the, the evidence is too clear too clear to ignore so there's a next judgment will be in verse 23 and uh, there god announced in verse 23 and change the glory of the incorruptible god into an image okay so when man rejects god well, he turns to what? Idolatry. That's what, that's what we do. And, and if you look at the sequence, you start pretty high. You start as a bird, and then you go to the four-legged animal, and then you go all the way down to the floor, to the creeping things. That's a sequence there. All right? That's what happens when we reject God. You go from thinking you're something to coming to the reality and to then just laying down with Satan, the, the serpent of all. So we have to be really careful. Now, uh, we, like I said, when men reject God, we turn to idolatry. You know, and back in the back in the first century, men were real, Gentiles, non-Jews were really easy uh, to do this. They they make their idols out of all things, golds and, and all kinds of materials. They would also make temples for those idols. Now, but 21st century people, we're we're too sophisticated, right, to make these little animals and hang it on our on our on our necks or. Put it on our houses. We're too sophisticated, right? So we don't have idols of stood of wood or wood or, or, or stone. Or, or do we? Do we? I think we do. We bow down to cars. We bow down to houses. We bow down to, um, uh, to many, many other things. But, but we make God sometimes even ourselves. We become our own gods. With little g, of course, uh, lowercase g. Uh, it might be our jobs. I always say that. It might be our possessions. You know, uh, if we if we reject God uh, for possessions, He will allow you. Again, the same principle. God will allow you to go on your idolatry. If you want to idolize your possessions, your physical possessions, God will allow you. He says uh, in the fourth uh, judgment here. If God is seen at verse 24, he says, God gave them up to the lust of their own hearts. God gave them up to the lust of their own hearts. So God will allow you to be consumed by your lust, your fleshly lust. That is, of course, if you want to be. He'll let you. He's not going to make you. So we have to be really, really careful. In the fifth one or the fifth place in verse 26, he gave them up to immorality. Listen to this. For this cause, God gave them up to their vile affections. And here in this verse, he's speaking about uh, homosexuality, of course, and, and condemns it. You know, many people say that the New Testament doesn't talk about a homosexuality, woman with woman, men with men. Well, bring him to chapter 1. 
There's a, you don't really have to explain much. And they do things, I know my daughter gave me a note, uh, now they try to justify homosexuality. She said that um, they try to change that word. She was watching a video, and they, change the, uh, they try to change the word unnatural uh, to something like, like someone uh, who usually doesn't you know, dance with stars or dancing. He said they try to say that um, what he's doing is unnatural of his usual character, but ne not necessarily bad. So now they're trying to change the word unnatural. It could be unnatural, but it's not bad. You know, that's, that's the bad rational, rationalization that we're doing here. Uh, we can try to make, make sin respectable if we want. We can try, try to make sin respectable, but God call, us what it, God call it what it is, sin. It is a disobedient, it is breaking God's law, and that's not a good thing. So if one, if one, any one of us or anyone out there determines to go on, on immorality, God will permit it. It's your life. You make the decisions. God is not going to make you uh, follow Him and do. Now, the sixth one, the sixth judgment of God in verse 28, He says He gives him up to a reprobate mind, a mindset to do wickedness. And we don't want to get there. So if we decide that we're going to reject God, um, that you're going to do as you please, not as God pleases, God will give you up to whatever it is you want to or you want to do with your life. So we have to be careful that we're not consumed by wickedness. Now, there's just a tragic account that we have here in Romans chapter 1 regarding the rational sinner. And if one decides he wants to put God out of our minds, God will not force himself upon you. He will not. He will allow you and I to, to put him out of our minds if we desire to. Now, but if we choose to go on that course, of course, we must give an account. We will all stand before the judgment scene of Christ. It doesn't matter what you decide to do, whether you decide to, to put on Christ, to follow Christ, to understand what He did for you when He died on the cross, to understand that He took your place. He died, so you don't have to. If you, if whatever you decide, you will face Him in judgment. So, this morning, if, if you're not in Christ, if you have not made that decision to, to follow Him, to, to, you just heard the good news. The first step is to, uh, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You just heard the Word of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. God, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God unto salvation. You can be saved from the wrath of God. By what? By believing in Jesus, believing that he came to this world, became a human being, suffered on that cross, shed his blood for your sins and my sins. We put him on that cross. Once you understand that, of course, there's got to be a repentance. You have to repent of your sins. If not, Christ says, you will die in your sins. Once you repent, of course, he asks you to confess him. Not confess your sins, but confess Christ before men. Say that you do believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. After you decide to repent, of course, you have to go to the waters of baptism to wash away your sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Ananias told Paul, what are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So this morning, if you're not in Christ and you want to make Christ your Lord and Savior, he, we can do that this morning. If you aren't in Christ, and uh, unfortunately you, you've been acting closer to this description of Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32, and you want to repent, you can do that as well. As, as long as you're living, if you are in Christ and you sin, repent, confess your sins, and the blood of Jesus Christ will continue to cleanse you. Whatever the need might be, if you want to do, make that happen this morning, let us do that as together we stand and sing. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood.